Today on Speaking in Drums, we're going to be talking about Pure Sounds Custom Pro Snare Wires. These are 24 strands, it's 14 inches, we're going to put it on this snare drum, and we're going to talk about the speed release straps that these come with, talk about how they work, how to put it together, and then we're going to hear what it sounds like. I've had people professionally make fun of the way I tune my drums, and I'm okay with that. Somewhere along the line in my illustrious drumming career, I was not advised as to when you should switch out the snare side heads or the snare wires on your snare drum. It never came up in conversation. Nobody talked about it back then. But recently, after doing a recording session, I realized this snare drum right here sounds like crap. So what was the problem? Well, I turned it over and found that the snare side head actually had a puncture mark in it. Or I shouldn't say mark, it was just a nice little hole. Don't know where it came from. But then I realized the snare wires themselves were starting to rust, and I didn't know they could be overstretched. Whoops. They actually had this kind of a wire on each end. Uh, it's not exactly a shoelace, but this was not fun to work with when you're getting in there and trying to measure everything, get it balanced, get it set in the right position, and then you have to get this in there and then get this all tied down. It's crap. It's I do not like this at all. So that's why I'm not using it anymore. One thing I should have done when I purchased this is go ahead and slap it on immediately. I made the mistake of not doing that. I waited a few days, and unfortunately the day of a show, I decided to put them on. Bad idea. I have to read directions carefully, thoroughly, and probably over and over and over again, because it has taken me a month to figure out where this hole is. My personal issue on this is that the pictures are black and white, very small, and sometimes they don't look to me the way they're kind of described. I had a hard time with getting the cotter pin in the right place and understanding how it worked. Sometimes I just have to do things trial and error. Now, the cotter pin is the tricky part. Now see, here's the speed release strap. That's all it is, it's not even connected to anything. It's just one piece like this. And this, as you can see, like on my previous snare drum, is where these wires would fit in. Which we don't want those anymore. And look at that, there's no cotter pin on that. Bye bye. The cotter pin itself fits in between these two white lines on this strap. Now this is actually, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this or not, there's a little hole there, okay? The cotter pin doesn't go there. This is actually a folded piece of material that is sewn back together here where these two lines are at. You want to fit the cotter pin into a hole that's in between those two lines. What you'll do is put your index finger here behind it, hold that end that's got that loop that you don't put the cotter pin through. So you're holding it here, index finger supporting that, you got your little hole open, which sounds a little weird. <laughs> Then, and like I said, you have to finagle it a little bit, but once you get that going and you hold this like this, thumb, index finger behind it, middle finger there, you hold it, you can slip that right in there. So now you've got your cotter pin in the right place. You have the majority of the pin itself that would actually be on the metal plate here in the sleeve. So you're gonna see that minimal metal will touch. You've got your plate showing the name, you want to put your strap through as well to show the name. So you have both logos there and then you're done. And boom, there you go. So it fits in like that. Minimal metal is actually even touching on the plate. You might have a little bit there on this bottom part and on the bottom part here, but most of it is actually the fabric. And you can actually move the cotter pin itself out so that it's sticking up rather than being flat against the plate or as flat as it can be. So you can stick it out like that. That's perfectly fine. You always want to make sure, though, you don't do what I did and put the cotter pin backwards because what's going to happen is all of that metal is going to be pressing against that. So this is what it should look like at the end result. You've got the Pure Sound logo here on this plate. 
You should always see that when you turn your drum over. You've got the cotter pin here inside the strap. And this strap here actually has measurements on there. If you can see that, let me turn it this way. When I put this on, I want to see the logo here and I want to see the logo here. So that's one easy way to remember how to do this. You want to make sure that this stays about halfway in between open and close. So about maybe right there. And this part here, what I do is I actually get this almost to the point where it's completely as far apart as it can be. Not that it's going to fall off, but I would try and get this as loose as possible. And what will happen is, is after we put the strap on here, we get this all tightened down and put this together, this part here will help determine how much tension I can put on the snare wires themselves. Now, you can see I've got the cotter pin here in the correct sleeve where it should be. You want to make sure that you've got your ends here matching up with the entry exit point and that you don't want it too close to the edge or too far away. So first things first, let's go ahead and pull that up, slip the strap through, and then just get that kind of lined up the way you want it. Make sure it's as close and as even as possible. You're going to go ahead and just finger tight these down. You don't have to crank them down just yet because you want to work on the other side too and then kind of get everything balanced a little bit. Make sure you get these down. Get that done first. What I do is push this up. Then I start bringing this in. So what this does is it'll pull on the snare wires. You see how that looks right there. Usually if I hear something about like that, and you're going to hear that buzz because you have more wires. The less wires you have, you're actually not going to hear so much of the buzz. You're going to hear more of the drum. More snare wires, more buzz. So, get to about there. Turn it over and see if it is contacting the way it should. The other thing I like about it too is it does what it's supposed to do. You can actually take the snare wires off quickly if you need to put new snare wires on or if you need to switch out the snare side head. So the concept of a speed release strap basically has to do with the strap and the cotter pin. So all you would have to do is remove that. And there you go. That's all that it is. These stay on. You can actually take the rim completely off, switch out the snare side head, put a new head back on, rim, put all the tension rods and lugs in together, get it tuned up. You have the cotter pins on both straps. The set that I got came with three cotter pins. One, I guess, for um, in case one of these get lost somehow, which is inevitable. Something like that will happen. Same thing with the straps. As I was wondering, if you have the speed release straps for the purposes of removing the snare wires quickly so that you can either change out new snare wires, put those in, or even change out the snare drum head, the snare side head, um, what happens when you start buying more of these? Do you continue to get the speed release straps? And then if so, maybe it defeats the purpose of having them because if you keep getting them with other sets of pure sound snare wires, you're going to have a bunch of these, like, everywhere, and cotter pins, all over the place. 
So I hope you enjoyed the video. This is what the Pure Sound Snare Wires Custom Pro model sounds like on my snare drum that I have. Uh, now, I don't have anything, of course, mic'd up. I've just got the uh, GoPro with its internal mic. I've got this mic here on the phone that I'm using to record this. So nothing special, but as you know, when you have more snare wires on a snare drum, you're going to have more buzz. That's just natural. And if you have any other uh, frequencies or anything that's uh, causing that to buzz, you're going to definitely hear that. So some other options you may want to consider. They do have one that actually has uh, some of the snare wires missing out of the middle here. You actually can get a set of uh, where it has 16 total. So you have like eight on either side, or you can even get less and get 12 and the whole middle section would be gone. But what that does is the less snare wires you have, it promotes the sound of the drum more so than the snare buzz. There's less snare buzz, more drum. So it's just basically the kind of sound that you want, the style you're looking for, and what applies and sounds good with the music that you're playing. Well, I'm glad that's over. You have to put it here in the hole between these two lines. <laughs> Couldn't find the hole. I gotta get it back in there. Uh, oh, oh, is it? Is it gonna happen? Is it gonna happen? Uh, I think we're almost there. We're almost there. Hold it like that. Hold it like that. And that's why you don't put the cutter pin here. I just figured it out. It's amazing. I invented the wheel. Oh, wow. So you can uh, do this. Hold it. You know, see how I'm holding it here on the end? You can do that. And then get it in that hole right in there if you can see it. No, you probably can't. Get it in that hole. Oh. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it.